Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala seyyidil mursaleen. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. A'udhu billahi minash shaytani rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitab. ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدن ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن له أجرا حسنا ما كثينا فيه أبدا وينذر الذين قالوا اتخذ الله ولدا ما لهم به من علم إلا لآبائهم ما له به من علم ولا لآبائهم كبرت كلمة تخرج من أفواههم إن يقولون إلا كذبا فلعلك باخع نفسك على آثارهم إن لم يؤمن في هذا الحديث أسفا إنا جعلنا ما على الأرض زينة لها لنبلوهم أيهم أحسن عملا وإنا لجاعلون ما عليها صعيدا جرزا أم حسبت أن أصحاب الكهف والرقيم كانوا من آياتنا عجبا صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل على سيدنا شفينا حبيبنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا شفينا حبيبنا مولانا محمد بارك وسلم صلاة وسلاما عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وسلم سما شاء الله we have finished half of the Quran. I have explained until Surah Al-Isra. And today, inshallah, I would like to summarize Surah Al-Kahf and Surah Maryam. These are two interesting surahs of the Quran and they have many important meanings. In terms of the revelation, these two surahs, particularly Surah Al- Surat Al-Kahf, I'm talking. So, in the in the Mus'haf Tartib, what we see that is after Surah Al-Isra, but originally in the order of revelation that revealed after Surah Al-Ghashiyah. هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يوم إذن خاشية عاملة ناصبة after that but in the Mus'haf it is placed after Surah Al-Isra which we talked about yesterday so so this is Surah Al-Kahf Surah Al-Kahf this surah is interesting surah. This surah, this surah, uh, this is interesting surah. This is revealed in Makkatul Mukarrama. And it is assumed, or some of the scholars mention, this surah in Makkatul Mukarrama revealed in early period of Islam. Early period of Islam meaning after the Biatha, few years, after two, three years, or after four years after the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Or you can say in general, in early period of Islam, not the last moment, not right before the Hijrah. In terms of the revelation, there is the narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu The summary of that is, when this Makkah Quraysh they realize that this Prophet وسلم, does not stop by delivering this his message. So they were trying or using many ways to stop him. So this time they decided to confirm his message, his prophethood, by the people of the book, or particularly by the Jewish those who used to live in Medina al Munawwar. So they said they sent someone to Medina to talk to Jewish community and ask them whether he 
is true in his message or not. They went to Medina. They talked to the Jewish community. They said to the, to this delegation of Quraysh, go and ask him three questions about the people of the cave, of the youth, those who left their society, and Zulqarnain, and about the spirit of the Ruh. If he would tell you the right answer, that means he is the prophet. If he is not, that means he is not a prophet. So this delegation came from Madinah to Munawwara back to Makkah. And this Quraysh, they asked these three questions. In the beginning, the Prophet وسلم, said, I will let you know tomorrow. But he وسلم, did not mention the word, Inshallah, if Allah wills, I will tell you it tomorrow. So it becomes one day, two days, three days passed, around 15 days passed, no answer. Then the Prophet ﷺ worried, and Makkan, they, they thought he is not a prophet because he's not giving us the answer. He does not know the answer. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the answer for all of this. The story of the people of the cave, then the Dhulqarnain, and then um, then spirit or the ruh which is mentioned already in surah al-isra so all this um, so this is and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed to the prophet sallallahu ta'ala wasalam, whenever you promised something you should mention the word inshallah or if allah wills this is just the guideline or this is the instruction from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to promise something or instructed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala if he wills, if he promised with someone or something, so how they should do. So basically this message is for us. If we are promising something, Allah's will must be mentioned for us particularly. Allah's will must be mentioned. Now, this surah revealed, and this is just a summary, now, uh, summary background, background summary. If you read this surah, this is interesting in a way that the surah talks or mention four stories or four narrations, four narrations. The first narration or the, or the, or the first story <clears throat> is related to the youth or the people of the cave or the group of the youth who left their society and they went to the mountain. They took the shelter in the cave because of religious persecution was going on in their society. So to escape the religious persecution, they left the society, went to the mountain, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them to sleep in the cave and then woke up after a long time, Quran mentioned, 100 years, 300 years, uh, and, and, the, and the nine. So 309 years, they stayed there. And then they woke up. The story goes on and on. I will share with you. This is the first story. The second story is related to two people, or it's called there were, there were two brothers. They both are given the garden. They both are, one of them is given the garden. They both were the, the wealthiest person, but one of them is given the garden here in this world. He did not spend his money for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, he became an arrogant. He showed his arrogance also. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him the lesson. On the other hand, his another brother, he spends all of his wealth and money for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the reward. This is the second lesson. The third lesson is the story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and a miraculous 
miraculous servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is, or that is, Sayyidina Khidr alayhi salam. This is also an interesting story. And Musa alayhi salam meets Sayyidina Khidr and the many things, conversation takes place between both of them. As a result, Musa alayhi salam learns a lot as a prophet. This is the third story. The fourth story, which is the last one, that is the story of Dhul Qarnayn, the story of Dhul Qarnayn. Dhul Qarnayn is a king or a person who ruled over the world. He went to the east, to the, to the west, west, and he was considered as a powerful king. So that story is mentioned here. So all these, these four stories, read four stories, then you will come to the conclusion, what is the purpose of Surah? What is the purpose of this Surah? What is the purpose of this Surah? So you will abstract or you will come to the conclusion, the, the main idea this Surah is presenting through all these four stories or narratives, that is the idea of the protection. Idea of the protection. Protection from what? Protection from the tribe. Protection from the tribe. Protection from the fetan. Protection from the test, any kind of test. I will go in detail and I will show you how. So that's why we see the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, in the virtues of this surah. Rasul وسلم, says, Man qara'a surat al kahfi min yawm al jum'ah aw fi yawm al jum'ah ada Allahu lah. Whoever recites surat al kahf on Friday or the day of Jum'ah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enlighten him. Will enlighten him. Ada Allahu lah. Nuram min tahti qadmaihi ila anani sama. The light or the nur will be under beneath of his, his feet to the heavens. This is one narration. The another narration says, Man qara al ashra al awakhir min surat al kahfi kanat lahu ismatum. In there is another narration that says, Man minkum, meaning Dajjal. This hadith is in Sahih Muslim. Meaning, whoever recites Surah Al Kahf, last 10 ayats of Surah Al Kahf, or according to the another narration of Muslim, whoever narrates, whoever reads the first ayats of Surat Al-Kahf. So they will be protected from the Dajjal or Antichrist. They will be protected from Antichrist. So this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, this hadith of the Prophet, or these narrations all together, they all are telling us whoever recites Surat Al-Kahf on the day of, um, uh, on Friday, so they will be protected from the trial of the Dajjal, Antichrist, from the trial of Antichrist. So our internal any cancer, this is of course, particularly the Dajjal or Antichrist is mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Ali Wa Sallam. I'm not from among those scholars who says that Dajjal means any kinds of the, any kinds of the problem. No, not at all. Because the Dajjal specifically is mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I, I believe that if we recite that, we will be protected from the Antichrist or his tribe. But also, like we, first we believe in that. Then after that, we can generalize. We can generalize and we can say in the light of the first narration I mentioned, Aba Allahu lahu. In the light of that narration, we can say we will be protected from the trial of the Jal and any other kinds of fitna. 
any other kinds of tests, any other types of, uh, 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 of the trial. So in first we will say protection from the child or antichrist and the protection from any kinds of trial. This way we cannot limit, we cannot say not in Dajjal, Dajjal is not intended, only any kinds of trial, no, that will be wrong. First we have to believe in that narration, then after that we can generalize. This, is, this will be the right understanding. Now the question I would like to ask, what is, what is the connection between the protection of the Dajjal and reading this surah? What is the connection? Rasulullah is telling us, read Surah Al-Kahf, you will be protected. So what is the connection? between this surah or the meaning of this surah and the protection. So this answer now would be easy for you to understand since I summarized for you the four stories. So the answer you can find within these four stories or while you are reading these four stories. The first story is, as I mentioned, that is the people of the the cave, people of the cave, the youth, they are trying to escape from the religious persecution. People at that time, they were rejecting to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a long time ago, before the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. But this group of youth, who supposed to be, who, who must be an example for us, for our days and time, for American youth, for American people, for us particularly, how our sh youth should be. So this group of youth is example for us, for our children, for our youth. So this group of youth, when they realize that they will be persecuted, they will be killed, they will be imprisoned, and they will be taken out of the society. They decided to escape, to run away from the society. So they left their society. They took the shelter in the mountain within the cave. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with his power, with his miracle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them sleep. They slept there. And Allah mentioned, mashallah, Interesting, interesting ayats. وَتَحْسَبُهُمْ أَيْقَادًا وَهُمْ رُقُودٍ وَنُقَلِّبُهُمْ ذَاتَ الْيَمِينِ وَذَاتَ الشِّمَالِ When you pass by them or anyone else, they will consider, they will think they are sleeping. وَتَحْسَبُهُمْ أَيْقَادًا وَهُمْ رُقُودٍ You will think they are awake. They are awake. While they are sleeping. They are in sleep. وَتَحْسَبُهُمْ أَيَقَادًا وَهُمْ رُقُودًا وَنُقَلِّبُهُمْ ذَاتَ الْيَمِينِ وَذَاتَ الشِّمَالِ I am turning them. We are turning them right and left. Interesting. Amazing story. Amazing story. They are asleep. فَطَرَبَنَا عَلَىٰ آذَانِهِمْ فِي الْكَافِ سِنِينَ عَدَدًا I put them sleep. They are asleep and they sleep for a long time. And then I raised them. I resurrected them after a long time. So now Allah says, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ نَبَأَهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ وَزِدْنَاهُمْ هُدَىٰ I'm narrating their stories. They are the true believer of, they are the youth, and they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we guided them. وَرَبَطْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ إِذْ قَامُوا فَقَالُوا رَبُّنَا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَنْ نَدْعُوَ مِنْ دُونِهِ إِلَىٰ هَلَّا قَدْ قُلْنَا إِذَا شَطَطَ So the story goes on and on. And finally, they, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It's me, subhanahu wa ta'ala, who was taking care of them. So after a long time, وَإِذِي اَتَزَلْتُمُوهُمْ وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَأُوْ إِلَى الْكَافِ يَرْشُغْ لَكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ وَيُهَيِّئْ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَمْرِكُمْ مِنْ فَقْرِ Then Ayah 17, which I wanted to quote here. This is the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayah 17, وَتَرَى الشَّمْسَ إِذَا طَلَعَتْ تَزَاوَرُ عَنْ كَافِهِمْ ذَاتَ الْيَمِينِ وَإِذَا غَرَبَتْ تَقْرِضُهُمْ ذَاتَ الشِّمَانِ 
So what happens when the the sun comes and goes? Sun rises, sun sets, moves by the mountain, moves by the by the by the cave. So, but how it happens? So when it rose, wearing away from their cave towards the right. And when it sets, moving away from them to the left. So they are protected. They do not have, they could not have the sunlight or they could not feel the heart so they can awake. This is the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Interesting way how they are protected from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then in ayah 18, وَتَحْسَبُهُمْ أَيْقَادًا وَهُمْ رُقُونَ If you pass by, you will see that you will feel that they are, they are awake while they are sleeping. And then finally, the people would discuss, finally, they, they woke up and they thought they just sleep away. Yesterday they sleep and last night they sleep. And now this is time they woke up next morning. It's the next morning. They were scary. They were fearing. So they sent one of them. And the story goes long and long, but very briefly. They sent one of them to buy a food from the town. When they went to the to town, close, close, close by. So they saw, or he saw, the one of them. Everything is changed. Everything is changed. Nothing is like it, as it was. So finally, they, they were caught off by the people. They, they realized because the queen they were holding, the currency they were holding, that was not the usual currency that was not at that time because they slipped. Hundreds and hundreds of years, around 300 years, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, 309 years. So after that, everything was changed. Finally, it was told to the king of the time that there is so and so people or group, they possess some kinds of treasury or coin. But when they came to know and they have the dialect, they have the discussion, they came to know, no, for a long time, 300 years before. There were the people, they were not believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from because of the khaf and fear, this group, they escaped. So they will not be persecuted. That's why they escaped. They came to the cave and now they woke up. They slept. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them to sleep. So, 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 so now they are awaking. So this group, these people of the area, those who saw them, they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by looking at this miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the people at that time, according to Imam Nasafi, were not believing in the day of resurrection. On the day of resurrection, they were not believing in that. So when they saw this miracle, they started believing in the day of resurrection and they, and they have the complete faith on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the summary a brief summary of the people of the cave. And then the people started discussing how many are they at the time of the Prophet wasalam, they, they said there were six or five or four or whatever. Allah says, they, soon they would say they are three and the fourth is their dog. Or they are five, sixth is their dog. They are not sure about that. They are just throwing here and there. They are not sure about that. They are confused. Some of them say they are seven and eight is their dog. That's I number 22. Say, Allah knows how many are they. Don't argue about them. So that is the story. And then Allah says, how many years did they stayed there? Thalatha mi'ati sinin was dadu tis'a walabitu fi kafim, ayah number 25. They stayed 309 years. 
309 years. So this is their story. And then after that, the story, after that, the story of the two people, two brothers, I said to you. One of them, they both are given the wealth, but one of them is paying for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another one who was not believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he entered, he is given the garden. He is given the garden. And this story starts from ayah number 32, and it goes to ayah number 44, 32, 44. So, so the, this person is given each and everything, but he went away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as a result, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala burned his garden and he left nowhere. So his brother or his friend who was the believer, he says, why you didn't believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Look at me. If you would believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you would say, Masha Allah, la quwata illa billah, so you will not be tested. Even then, he says, Okay, my Lord will be when his, his friend told him to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he he became arrogant and he did not accept his, his, his thought, his advice. But when it burned, then he was nowhere. And he says, you were right and you were saying right. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after this story tells us something which I will come back because, uh, because there is no, not much time. So then the story of Sidna Musa and Khidr. Musa and Khidr alayhim as -salam, Sayyidina Musa one day was asked, who is the most knowledgeable person on the surface of the earth? Sayyidina Musa said, I am the one because he's the prophet of the time. He's a messenger, his closest friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he deserved to announce that I am the most knowledgeable person on the surface of the earth. But Allah said, no, that is not. There is some, someone who has the knowledge more than you, Musa. Then he was guided and instructed to go to meet Sayyidina Khidr alayhi salam or virtuous person, virtuous person, person or mysterious person, mysterious person, someone says. Mysterious person of a mysterious servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quran says, Rajul Salih. Rajul Salih. Or the hadith says, Rajul Salih. So he came. The story goes long, but finally he was about to meet Sayyidina Khidr alayhi salam. Sayyidina Khidr alayhi salam. And then he requested to him, he requested him to be with him. So Sayyidina Khidr says, no, you will not, you cannot stay with me. You will not have the patience. He says, no, I will be patient. And I will follow what would you say? I would not. Then he says, okay, if you are following me, you should. You should not ask if you see any strange, any, any unusual thing. So don't ask me. He says, okay, Satajidunu, insha'Allah, sabiran wa la kamra. I will follow you, insha'Allah, and I will be patient. Then what happened? From Talaqa, the three things happened very quickly, very briefly. Three things, three incidents. The first, they boarded in a boat. Now Khidr alayhi salam hold in a boat. Sina Musa opposes that. Sina Khidr says, Alam akulla kamala, inna kalan tastati, inna kalan tastati maya sawra. Didn't I say you that you would not be patient with me? Then Sina Musa says, okay, sorry, forgive me. I will see next. I will not, I will not oppose you. I will not oppose you next. Then they went, they found a boy, Sidna Khidr Kirdi. Sidna Khidr Kirdi. Then again, Musa alayhi salam opposes. He says, he was an innocent boy and you killed him. Then again, he says, Didn't I say to you that you will not be having the patience? Then again, Musa alayhi salam says, okay, 
No, fine. In Saltuk and Shaim Badaha Faratu Sahibi. If I will ask you after that, then don't take me, don't put me in your company. Don't keep me with your company. I will not be with you. Then the next time there was a, a, a wall that was about to crumble. And these people, they, they told to Sina Khidr al Islam. Sina Khidr al Islam corrected them, fixed this wall. And before that, they asked, they were so hungry. Musa al Islam and Khidr al Islam, they asked these people, people of this village, some food. They denied them. They did not give them the food. And when the, the wall, they saw the wall is about to destroy. So Khidr al Islam fixes this wall. Musa opposes. They did not feed us. They did not give us the food. How come you are fixing their wall? Now, Sina Khidr says, Hada firaqu baini wa bainik. Now take you your way, and I'm going to my way. That is the story. And then at the end, I will come back again. Then the, the Dhul Qarnayn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yas'alunaka an Dhul Qarnayn, Qul sa'atlu alaykum minu dhikra, inna makkanna lahu fil ardi wa ataynahu min kulli shay'in sababa. He is the most in, strongest person, strongest person or strongest king on the surface of the earth at his time. He went to the east and to the west. Hatta idha balagha maghrib al-shams wajadaha taghrabu fi aynin hamia wa wajada indaha qawma ulla ya dal qarnaini imma tu'atib wa imma tattakhida fi inkasna. So he went to the western point he went to the eastern point and he made with the people, different type of people. They could not understand their language and they could not even wear a proper dress. They are naked. And so, 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 so he traveled throughout the world. So when he came to the eastern part, so they were with the nation, they were the people, they were killing or eating each and everything of this area of people, the people, those who were living in this area. So they asked Dhul Qarnayn to have some kinds of barrier or the wall so they cannot come to them, they cannot kill them. So Dhul Qarnayn asked help from them and they help them, and they, he build a wall so they can be protected. And at the end, he said, Hada rahmatun min Rabbi. This is for my Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in short, these are the stories, these four stories. So within all these four stories, you will find the idea of protection. Idea of protection. Because the hadith I mentioned, the hadith says, if you are reading the Surah Al-Kaf on the day on Friday, so you will be protected from the Dajjal Antichrist and from any kinds of tribe, from any kinds of tribe. So first of all, the first lesson, the first lesson, Ashab Al-Kaf. So what is that? They are protecting what they are protecting. They are preserving their religion, their deen. They are protecting in order to protect their iman, their deen, their religion. They traveled. They went where? They went to the cave. Idea of protection. Now these two people, two brothers or two friends, when they are given each and everything, when they are given each and everything, one of them, and then at the end, the one who is paying each and everything for the dunya, to preserve the dunya, to gather the dunya. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows the reality of this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows them the reality of this dunya. وَضَرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Ayah number 45, 45, 46, 48. وَضَرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا إِنْ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ 
So show them the reality of the dunya. The reality of the dunya. Show them. Show them the reality of the dunya. The reality of dunya is nothing except the ornament. Except the few things, what you see there. No more than that. No more than that. So, so the reality of this world is no more than that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing the reality of this world reality of this world so you can be you can be ready you can be ready for the for the akhara so in the story of this the people of cave or ashabul kahf you can see the protection of the deen the protection of the deen and in the story of these people you can find the how you can protect yourself from the wealth from the wealth, from this dunya, from the ornaments of this, this world, from this world which is which based on nothing, which bases on nothing. So protection from the dunya and going towards the akhara, getting ready for the akhara. And in the story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and Sayyidina Khidr alayhi salam, the trial of the knowledge, trial of the knowledge. You will be tested. You will be tested by giving the knowledge. You are the biggest scholar of the time. You are the biggest wali Allah. You are the virtuous person. You are biggest of the biggest. Here the test comes, the trial comes. How you are going to protect yourself? How you are going to be a humble, showing your tawadu, your nothingness. So in this story, in the story of Musa and Khidr salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us the test and trial, the test if we are given the knowledge, if we are given the knowledge. So therefore we are protecting ourselves from being arrogant from being arrogant and coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, in the story of Dhul Qarnayn, in the story of Dhul Qarnayn, what type of test? The power. You are given the power. You are given the, the each and everything. You are the king of the world, king of the king. You travel from around the world, from around the world. But still, after all, Dhul Qarnayn says what? Hada rahmatum mir rabbi. Hada rahmatum mir rabbi. Whatever I have done, that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, here you can say the test, test of the power, power you are given, and then test of knowledge, and then test of the wealth, then test the religion, the, the iman you are given. It's test of the iman. In all that, at the end of that, out of this story, you will find the verses. I'm not, uh, I'm not reading all these verses. So at the end of these stories, you will find the word where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us how you can gain the lesson from these stories and how you can protect yourself. How can you, how you can protect yourself. So when you are reading, when you are reading the, the Surat Al-Kahf, as the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala wasallam mentioned, you are protecting yourself to be tried, to be tested through these stories. Here comes the connection. Whoever recites, whoever recites Surah al they will be protected from the trial of the Dajjal or the, from trial of, from the trial of these people or these things. 
So this story, what I mentioned within this story. So, so this way, Surat Al-Kahf is, Surat Al-Kahf is the protection. Surat Al-Kahf is the protection. So you have to get at the end of these people, this youth, Allah says, you have to have the suhba saliha. You have to have a good friendship. Wasbir nafsaka ma'al ladina yaduna rabbahum. Ayah number 28. Ayah number 28. And then by the end of the story of these people, ayah number 29. Read ayah number 29, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this dunya. That you have to remember akhirah. So all this, these are mentioned. All these are mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf. In short, if you look at Surah Al-Kahf and you read the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, where the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam says, whoever recites Surah Al-Kahf, he will be protected from the end and the Dajjal or Antichrist or from these four types of the trials, trials of their Iman, they will be safe in terms of their Iman. They will be protected from being engaged in the world or worldly affairs. And if they are given the knowledge, you will be safe. You will not be arrogant. And then if you are given the power or any position here in this world, you will be protected as you will be reading the whatever I was given. This is the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the main idea in Surah Al-Kahf. And then also there are many other things. One more point you can find in these stories, traveling, the journey. The youth, they left, they left their houses, their village, and went outside of their village. Musa salam, is traveling. These two brothers, they are also traveling. The journey is mentioned. And this Dulqarnayn, he is traveling. So journey and journey and journey. What does it say? In order to have the khair, in order to achieve the good, in order to obtain the, the in order to obtain the goodness in your life, or whatever you want to achieve in your life. Journey and leaving a place is required, is recommended. This is the story. These stories are telling us this reality. Whenever you want to improve yourself, you want to improve yourself dunya-wise or deen-wise. So travel and travel and travel. Dunya-wise, dunya-wise, of course, whatever the position you want, deen-wise, looking for the scholars, for the shuyukh, for the mashayikh, for the virtuous people, mysterious people like Rajul Salih Sayyidina Khidr So journey and traveling is one of the key idea which is mentioned in this surah. And finally, this surah ends with the advice to the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam for us, for the for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the power of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's power, Ullaw kana al-bahru nidadan li kalimati rabbi, lana fida al-bahru, qabla an tanfida kalimati rabbi, walaw ji'ina bimithlihi madada, qabla an tanfada kalimati rabbi, inna ma ana basharu mithlukum, yuha ilay. I will talk some other time on this ayah. So Allah says, if the entire world, the oceans, the sea, the rivers, they all become the ink and the trees becomes the pen and you would like to mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or his praise, you will not, you cannot do that because his praise is beyond of the limitation. Then Rasul sallallahu ta'ala wa sallam was instructed say to them, you are a human being, but, but, very important, but, you ha ilayyum. I receive the revelation. I'm not like you. Many people just to say, he is like us. He is a man like us. It's a wrong expression. It's a mistake in the expression. This is wrongly described. 
mistake can be. It's a big mistake. He's a man like us. He's a man like us. He's, how you are saying you forget to read the next word, you ha ilayya. If he's a man like you, why you don't receive the wahi? Yes. Yes, he's a man. Naturally, of course, like us. But whenever you mention that, he's a man like us, mention you ha ilayya. He receives wahi. I don't receive wahi. You don't receive wahi. He receives wahi. That is the distinctive point. I will talk about that some other time. Just to highlight it here. Innama ilahukum ilahu wahid. Allah is one. Faman kanu yafkana yardu liqa'a rabbik fal ya'mal amalan saliha wa la yushrik bi ibadati rabbihi ahada. So they should not associate anyone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they should, must do the right deed or, or, or good, good deeds. And then they will be successful. This is the summary of Surah Al-Kahf. In terms of Surah Maryam, very briefly, because I already mentioned about that Surah Maryam in Surah Ali Imran, the long story, the detail. But the one point, what is the main theme in this, this Surah, in Surah Maryam? The point in Surah Maryam, or the main theme is the defense. Defense. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is defending who? Sayyidah Maryam alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is defending who? Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. There are many more things, but the main theme is defending. Allah is defending Sayyidah Maryam and Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. This surah is mashallah interesting. Number one, the name of this surah. This is the only surah that is holding the title of the, uh, the, the specific woman, particular woman in the history. And that woman is not a prophet. That woman is not a prophet, interestingly. This woman is a wali Allah, is a virtuous woman, is the closest friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So she has close connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why the surah is mentioning her name and the title is with her name. A great woman, miraculous woman, Maryam alayhi salam. And in the beginning, this surah talks about Sayyidina Zakariya alayhi salam, which I already talked in Surah Ali Imran. And briefly, when the, the, I mean, the, the believers, the Muslims, Muslims, when Sidna uh, under uh, supervision or leadership of Sidna Jafar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they migrated to Habsha or Ethiopia, and the Quraysh followed them, and they were asking the king of uh, the Ethiopia or the Najashi to send them back to Makkah so they could be persecuted. But Sidna Jafar radiallahu ta'ala anhu recites this surah in front of this king. This is the brief narration. Sayyidina Jafar talks to the king and he says, O oh king, you are given the same, we are given the same message. We have the same message, but these people are claiming they are false in their claim. So when Sayyidina Jafar explained, so the king asked him, do you have that thing? I would like to listen that. Sayyidina Jafar started reciting this surah, Kaf ha ya'in sod, dikru rahmati rabbika abdahu zakariya, idna da rabbahu nida al khafiya. And he was reading and reading and reading, recited until, I think, ayah number 34. And the king was listening attentively. After that, he accepted the Imam. He started crying. He says, he says this is the same thing. It comes from the same source. The source, the Injil in has the source, the same source that this word has. So he accepted the Imam. Although he did not become the companion of the Prophet السلام, but he became the Tabai, or Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam prayed his funeral prayer.
نجاش except for the iman so mashallah miracles suwa and then after that so here also you can find the idea of defense idea of defense allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is defending the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is defending the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam this group of quraish they were following this group of sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum and they wanted from najashi to send them back to makkah but with the blessing of the surah the verses of the surah they were protected and defended so allah defended them and they came back they they stayed with them with the and under the kingdom of in the kingdom of najashi and then when sayyida maryam alayha salam the jewish community they were blaming and accusing sayyida maryam alayha salam that she did wrong allah revealed this surah allah purifies sayyida maryam alayha salam and sayyida maryam alayha salam was told by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they would come to you you should not be worried only you have to say when they would say to you ya ukht harun ma kana abuki imra'i sa'im wa ma kanat ummuki baghiya your family was so virtuous family your family is so virtuous family so pious family but you are the wrong one you are wrong you did wrong you committed wrong in the sense you committed in the sense oh maryam ya ukhta harun ma kana abuki imra'i sa'im wa ma kanat ummuki baghiya and before that laqad jiti shay'an fariya you just committed wrong thing none of your family household none of the member of your family committed this type of wrong so allah is defending and telling to see the maryam fa asharat ilayhi qalu kayfa nukallimu man kana fil mahdi sawiya o maryam when they would come to you and they would blame you they would accuse you just indicate to this boy this young baby he will take care of that he will take care of you he will defend you he will purify you and he will explain each and everything about you what is the reality and when it when it happened they came together blaming and accusing sida maryam so sida isa said inni abdullah atani al kitab wa ja'alani nabiyya he's just a few hours baby he talks he talks he speaks up inni abdullah atani al kitab atani al kitab wa ja'alani nabiyya he gave me the book and the servant of allah he gave me the book and he made me nabi and the prophet of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is defending sida maryam alayha salam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is defending sidna isa alayhi salam as he said after that was salam alayya yawma wulidtu wa yawma amutu wa yawma ubathu hayya ayah 33 and then he says alayhi salam dhalika isa ibn maryam qawla alladhi qawla alhaqq alladhi fihi yamtarun ma kana lillahi an yattakhidha min waladin subhana idha qada amran fa inna ma yaqulu lahu kun fayakun there is no association with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah when he wants to create something he says be it becomes fa inna ma yaqulu law kun fa yakun when he says be it becomes it becomes wa inna allah rabbi wa rabbukum fa'buduhu hada sirat mustaqim so the jewish community they ashamed they did not have any argument and maryam and his son were defended by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and at the end the surah also the surah also talks to the christian community they were associating someone they were saying this is son of god 
So Allah says, يَوْمَ نَحْشُرُ الْمُتَّقِينَ إِلَى الرَّحْمَةِ أَطَّلَ عَلَى غَيْرِ No, before that. أَفَرَأَيْتَ الَّذِي كَفَرَ بِآيَاتِنَا وَقَالَ لَأُوتَيَنَّ مَا لَهُ وَلَدَا أَطَّلَ عَلَى غَيْرِ أَمِ اتَّخَذَ عِنْدَ الرَّحْمَانِ عَدَا كَلَّا كَلَّا No, not at all. They associate someone kalla. No, no, no. Allah does not have, Allah does not have any association, any partner. You are claiming or stating such a claim, such a statements that the heaven can go, can come down, that the earth can be break down, can break down, can go down. What type of talk you are talking? This is shirk. Saying someone is son of Allah, son of, son of God. So shameful statement. So shameful statement. It is not suitable for Rahman, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he can make someone as his son. In Kulluman fi samawati wal ard, illa aati rahmani abda, laqad ahsahum wa abdahum abda, wa kulluhum aatihi wa man qiyamati farda. On the day of judgment, everyone will come and then you will be judged. You will be judged. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سَيَجْعَلُ لَهُمُ الرَّحْمَانُ وُدَّا فَإِنَّمَا يَسْتَرْنَاهُ بِلِسَانِكَ لِتُبَشِّرَ بِهِ الْمُتَّقِينَ وَتُنْذِرَ بِهِ قَوْمَ اللُّدَّا وَكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا قَبْلَهُمْ مِنْ قَرْ هَلْ تُحِسُّهُمْ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ أَوْ تَسْمَعُ لَهُمْ بِكْزَا The last ayah. So basically in last few ayats, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is defending himself or I would not say Allah defends himself, but he's talking about himself and telling to the Christian how you are associating someone, the day of judgment, someone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The day of judgment is near. Only on that day, the successful people are inna ladina amanu wa amilu saliha. Those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they do not associate anyone with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there are many people, many nations, many qawm, they all are destroyed because they did not believe in oneness of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So on the day of judgment, you will be accountable. In short, Surah Maryam, the main theme in this surah is the defense. Allah is defending the Quran and Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam protecting the group of Sahaba. Allah is defending Sayyidina Maryam alayhi salam. Allah is defending Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning about himself that he is alone and warning to the Christian community and Jewish community. They must come back to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So mashallah, these two surah, Kahf and Maryam are these interesting surah. Maria Kahf that talks, that mention about the protection, the main thing is the protection. And the Maryam Kahf in Kahf is the main thing is the protection and protection of Iman, protection of the, the, from this worldly thing and protection if you are given the knowledge and protection if you are given the power. And this Surah, Surah Maryam defends the Miraculous people, Sida Maryam, Sida Isa, alayhi salam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and give us tawfiq to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma rabbana taqabbal binna inna kanta sabiul alim. Wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept whatever I explain. Wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive if I did any kinds of mistakes in my explanation. Wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive. Wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive my sins and forgive sins of brothers and sisters, those who are joining me through the virtual, using the virtual ways. 
Zoom or YouTube, wherever they are. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive our brothers and sisters, those who are even did not join us. Forgive all of our brothers and sisters. Forgive all of our brothers and sisters. Accept our ibadat in this blessed month of Ramadan and accept their ibadat who are here, who are not here, who are here in this region and wherever they are. Accept their ibadat, accept their, their good deeds in this blessed month of Ramadan. Accept our fasting, accept our recitation, accept our nawafil, accept our nawafil, accept our khairat, accept our sadaqat. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and give us shifa, give the shifa to our brothers and sisters, wherever, whoever is suffering, wherever they are suffering. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon the brothers and sisters in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, Kashmir. Help the Kashmiri people, oh Allah. Help the Kashmiri people, Kashmiri Muslims. Help the Indian Muslims. Help the Chinese Muslims. Help the Yemeni Muslims, Burmese Muslims, Afghani Muslims. And help the Muslims and the brothers and sisters, those who are suffering in Yemen, Syria, Iraq, Palestine, and wherever they are, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This particular time, in this particular moment, in this particular time and moment, I am asking you, and the brothers are with me. They are saying, Ameen. Say, Ameen. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm asking about our brothers. Have mercy on them. Protect them, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Protect them, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Release them from this situation. From this cruel situation, cruel people. This, this people, they are doing wrong. The people, those who are given the power in this world, the powerful people, they are doing wrong with the Muslims. They are doing zulm with the Muslims. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, protect the Muslims. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muslims are helpless. They are only returning to you, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are only asking from you, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe in you, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe in your Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We believe in your Quran. We believe in your scriptures. We believe in all the articles of faith. Oh Allah, you are our Allah. You are our God. You are alone our God. You are alone our master. You are alone our sustainer. You are alone our controller. You are alone each and everything for us, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are asking you about our brothers and sisters, those who are under trial, those who are under trial, those who are under problems, those who are suffering, those who are suffering. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, protect them all, protect us all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us ease from this situation. Give us ease from this situation. Allahumma rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta sami'ul alim. Wa tub alayna inna kanta tawabur rahim. Allahumma khfir lana wa li walidayna wa li mashayikhina wa li asakidatina wa li jami'il mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahyai minhum wal amwat inna ka sami'un qaribun mujibu al-da'wat sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqi سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك أهو وعلى لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم سيركم إن شاء الله جزاكم الله خيرا for joining this session